Hey guys, I wanted to talk with you today about using classroom rewards. So, and this is in the distance learning environment. I have been for the last month or more racking my brain about how to convert my classroom management system that I typically use in person into a, a digital platform. And um, my district has recently added Schoology for this upcoming school year. So I know that they have a badge system and I wanted to find out a, a way to use those as well as um, something I'm more familiar with, which is Class Dojo. So I've been using Class Dojo um, for the last six years. I really, really enjoy it. And every year there are more features to it. Um, I'm not gonna get into uh, too much of Class Dojo today, but I wanted to talk about how I can still use Class Dojo or especially use Class Dojo in this distance learning environment, um, along with the Schoology badges and, um, you know, what kinds of behaviors am I looking for, wanting, um, you know, what am I encouraging or discouraging for my students, and how am I communicating that to them and their parents. So, uh, this is what I've kind of come up with. This is a Google Slides presentation I plan to share with my students um, and parents and, and kind of let them know my expectations at the beginning of the school year. So to begin, I inserted my Bitmoji because I thought that that would be fun. Um, and I picked a theme that I really like. It's just one of the themes over here. This one, I think it's really cute. It comes with this font. So I just used that theme that's built in there. Um, so to begin, I wanted to communicate with my students, how are they earning dojo points? So I started by setting up my class dojo for this upcoming school year. I don't yet know the names of my students, so I wasn't able to enter them, but I was able to go ahead and um, get the classroom set up and get my, my behaviors and skills set up there for them to earn. Um, so here is my class for this upcoming year. I did need to add one student so that I could play around with another feature of um, how I wanted to email out my classroom to parents. And so I added my dog, Shady. So that's why I do have a student there. Um, so to begin, I wanted to uh, edit the course. I, of course, gave it my name. Uh, which is Mrs. Russell's class, and then I just put the school year. Uh, so I wanted to go to edit. Again, I just added my dog. That's all that I have. Uh, and then I go over to skills. So I use both the positive skills and the needs work skills. Um, it's definitely an option for you to do positive points only, and some people um, just want to stick with the positive. So I completely understand that. Um, so let's look at the positive skills I wanted to use uh, and enforce. And of course, you can adjust these at any time throughout the school year. As the school year progresses, I always find different things to add um, or take away if I'm just not using one of these regularly. But again, this is distance learning. So I was thinking, well, what, what kinds of things can I still use? And most of them are still things I want to encourage in my students, kindness. Um, on task behavior, participation, work completion, being a role model and persistence. Those are all things I still want to encourage. They're just going to look different in the distance learning environment. So I wanted to think about, well, what are the expectations? What does on task um, behavior look like in the distance environment? So those are kinds of things I wanted to, um, you know, brainstorm. So I will, I will look I will show you that in a moment where I go into the details. So I also um, give my students to start each day a daily five. Um, as long as they were present in school that day, I give them five dojo points to begin each day. I use a money system typically when I'm in person. So I give them a dollar for each of these things. I tell them that their daily five is the money that they receive for doing their classroom job. So I usually associate this with their classroom job. I usually collect rent each month and I have a whole whole system, but um, that's going to be changed. So I'm more focusing on just the points and then them cashing in their points. 
So those are the ones um, that are the positives. I also have some needs works. Um, and so I, while well, the positives are all plus one, except for their daily five, for needs work, I do disrespectful, respect, respectful nature, and I communicate this to my students, is, is something that I think is really, really important. And so being disrespectful um, is something that I just do not tolerate, and that's why it, it is a minus two. Um, calling out or being unmuted, uh, being late, uh, off task, unprepared. So I was trying to figure out what are things that my students might need work with. Um, and I will say that when I am taking away points, I do so um, very uh, liberally. So I um, I only I only do it if it's something that is a consistent behavior, something that the student knows that they're working on and they're still doing it. Um, it's something that I have a conversation with the student about. And I think it's important for, for there to be consequences. I think it's important for those things that the students are working on to be communicated to the parents and Classroom Dojo does that for me. So um, I will also say that usually I'm not taking away dojo points where I'm not also emailing or calling the parent and letting them know about that behavior because it is something that's happened consistently or it is something that is extreme. So that's where I'm at with the needs work. Yes, I use them, but I use them in a way that is only in kind of an extreme situation or um, something that is just consistent and again, I make sure that I communicate with the parents and the students about those things. So what I did um, in my thing here is I wanted the students to understand how are they earning these points. So I put the details here, you get five each day. Um, so what is participation? What is participation in the distance learning classroom? Uh, raising their hand. Now raising their hand might physically mean holding their hand up to the camera or in a Google Meet, which is the platform my district is using in a Google Meet situation or in, in Zoom, you might have the possibility of doing a virtual hand raise or maybe um, you come up with a symbol that the kids kids do or something that they put into the chat that is communicating to you that they want to share. So um, raising your hand, answering questions, uh, persistence. So I, I explain that working hard, trying your best, never giving up. Uh, being a positive role model in the class is doing what your teacher asks and setting a good example for others. Kindness, being kind and helpful. Sometimes I have an additional button that I'll use uh, called like, you know, be like helping helping others or something, but I feel like helpfulness kind of falls under the umbrella of kindness. Um, and then on task. So what is on task in this distance learning environment? I'm thinking they're listening, they're following along in our Google Meet sessions. And then completing all the assigned work. Um, I think that this, this is not one that I typically use in the classroom. This is something I'm thinking about for distance learning. I really, I had an issue in the spring with work completion, as did so many other teachers. But I think it's really important that I, I want to encourage them to get their work done, that it is important. We are in school. This is not the spring. These things need to be happening. Again, here are the negatives. Um, the needs work rather. So again, I put this word consistently unmuting yourself to talk out of turn because, you know, calling out is going to look so different in this environment. It would really, it would take a kid pushing a button to unmute themselves and then, you know, spewing out. Uh, so I think it's going to be much harder for kids to do that. So it's more the unmuting, um, but again, I don't know that this is really going to be a huge issue for the distance learning environment. Um, disrespectful, saying or doing unkind things to others. And here's the here's the kicker, intentionally. It's one thing to do it and you didn't mean it, um, but either intentionally or, you know, you do it multiple times. So it, it's it's no longer an accident. It, it becomes something that's intentional. Arriving late to our meetings. So normally being late or tardy is not something that I uh, am docking kids 
points from, but I'm wondering, you know, if, if we're consistently having these times when students are needing to be logging on and if there's a student that is consistently arriving late, um, you know, they're, they're not on time. Obviously, that's a conversation I'm going to have with their parents ahead of time. It's going to be something I talk with the students ahead of time. And then if it, it progress, if it continues, then maybe I'm using this. Again, this might be something I get rid of later. It was just kind of a thought. Okay, well, what does off task look like in the distance learning environment? I'm saying not paying attention the website, to the teacher. Oh, geez. Um, my Google Home. So that was interesting. Anyways, off task behavior, um, not paying attention to the teacher, playing with items, maybe they're sleeping, multitasking. So I'm, I had students in the spring who actually turned on their computer and then were asleep in front of the screen. It, it blew my mind. Um, and then I had kids that were like playing with paper airplanes or fiddling with things. They had their stuffed animals because they were laying in bed or what have you. There are a lot of different things that were happening in the springtime that I want to discourage. And again, this is something that's happening consistently, something that I've already had a conversation with the student about, and it persists. And then being unprepared. So I feel like there might be a chance of this being something um, that is a problem coming up. Uh, they're coming to class without the items they need. So, you know, I say everybody, you know, take out your math notebook and write this notes down. And I've got six kids running around their house and you can tell that because, you know, you see their screen moving or whatnot. So if that's happening, you know, consistently and they're missing information because of it, then maybe that's something I look into. So when creating this, all I did is um, I used kind of the snipping tool if you're on a uh, Windows. If you're on a uh, Mac like I am, what I did is when I, I pulled up my skills, I used uh, Shift Command and then the number four, and then I just um, was able to kind of take a screenshot and then it saves it to your desktop. That's all that I did to get those on to here. And then I just inserted them, just paste right in there. So that's, if you're wondering how I got those buttons on there, I wanted them to be the actual ones. That's why I encourage making your skills on Classroom Dojo first so that your pictures um, oops, are matching on here. All right, so then I wanted to talk about, well, how do they take those points and turn them in to a reward, what are they earning? So I'm gonna go with, or at least this is my plan, is on Fridays, the students can use their accumulated points from the week to redeem them for a reward from the following slide. Um, you can also choose to save your points for a different Friday to redeem them. Once you redeem them, I will deduct from the point total. And um, if you're not familiar with Classroom Dojo, I can do a video on that. Please just drop me a comment if you want me to do a kind of bare bones tutorial of Classroom Dojo. I don't mind doing that. Let me know. Um, but this video is kind of with the assumption that you already have some Dojo uh, skills. So I saw this, I actually stole this. Um, this has kind of been floating around Facebook and the web, um, some different items, and I did change these two out. I think I actually just covered this up. Um, so if you move it, there was something behind it. Um, but I, I changed them to kind of fit what I think works for students. So choose the teacher's hairstyle. That's something I'm willing to do. Maybe not every teacher is willing to do that. Um, and I think that will come with something that I can physically do. <laughs> I'll have to, you know, if the kid comes up with something that I can't do, I'm not a professional hairstylist, so we might have to adjust. Um, and I also made that a, a pretty hefty point there because <laughs> that's something I don't plan on hopefully doing too often. Uh, wearing sunglasses, that would be for the students, not for myself. Uh, for 30 minutes. So I don't know that kids will pick that. Uh, introduce your pet. That's more of a fun one. Um, teaching the class about a favorite hobby of yours. And I have my little girl cooking there. Um, I think I would probably put a time limit on this, like five minutes or so, and, and kind of let the, the kid know that. Uh, oops perform an original song, poem, or dance. We have some kids that, you know, are really into 
uh, sharing their talents. So maybe they want to do that. Have lunch with the teacher. This did say snack and I changed the word lunch because they don't plan on, on really having a snack. So I changed that to lunch. And again, I picked a hefty point value for that because my breaks are really valuable to me. Um, some other things I came up with, um, choosing a brain break for 10 minutes for the whole class. Um, a teacher drive by. So, you know, driving by their home. And then that's something I would probably set up with the parents and communicate with the parents ahead of time. Uh, read aloud to the class. Uh, the students would be, get a chance to do that and then bring a stuffed animal. So I'm really discouraging um, kids having toys and stuff when they're on meets with me. So that would be a reward. And then I have two more spaces in case I think of other things. Um, so for whole class rewards, I have always used um, a compliment star system. So anytime we get a compliment in the hall from another teacher, from a specialist, from an admin, the kids earn a star and our goal has always been 15 and I have these little magnetic stars I put up on my doorway so that you know they can visually see it. So in my Bitmoji classroom, I'm trying to come up with a way to display the star so that they can see those on the Bitmoji classroom, just like they would if we were in the actual classroom. Um, so I think it's going to be a lot harder for they, them to gain compliments in the distance learning environment because we're not walking in the halls and um, there's not as many specialists seeing them and those kinds of things. So um, I will probably have to give stars myself. Uh, so I was trying to think of what would be things I would give stars for. So the full class participation activity, if everyone's like really doing a good job, really engaged um, or just really good behavior, I think I'm going to have to reward stars this upcoming school year in order for them to actually gain them. And then the rewards that they, I always let my students kind of choose and vote on a reward with my approval. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with that of letting the students kind of come up with the ideas. I might have a few myself, but I think it's really important for kids to pick their own rewards. And honestly, going back to these, if the kids have any ideas, I'm open to accepting those as well. All right. So now into the Schoology badges. So I went into Schoology and with that snipping tool, I did the same thing. I snipped these out of Schoology and they already have descriptions on them. So I think that's awesome. So I didn't have to do too much here. Um, I did kind of think, well, you know, when am I going to reward these? And I was kind of thinking about maybe it's report card time and, and, you know, I'm thinking about my comments and the different things, the various things that kids have done. And so I'm thinking I'm going to do it quarterly. I think it's probably, maybe you could keep up with it monthly as a teacher, but up to you. Um, but you know, I think quarterly is doable. Maybe I'll adjust that. Um, but I'm thinking when it's report card time, I'm already kind of thinking about these skills as they're things I have to mark on the report cards and then I can reward, you know, X number to the students. This one, there's a student of the month one and my school actually does a student of the month for each school each classroom. Um, so this is something we already do. So this will be awarded monthly. And so I figure I'll just give the student that badge when, when it is their month. Um, so yeah, that is where I kind of came up with these ideas. I will say for making this, I created this. Um, all I did was I searched like polka dot squares off of Google and then I found some pictures and I just inserted them here and I I just made this table with the line tool um nothing too fancy and then the this little white part is just a shape so I just went to um to add a shape and I just picked that second one so that's all I did because I wanted it to match this which was already pre-made um so I just kind of found the polka dots off Google and then made the shape over top of them, try to make them all about the same size and put some lines here to kind of make borders. Um, so nothing too fancy there. And yeah, that's pretty much all that I had. So again, let me know if you want me to do a tu tutorial on Classroom Dojo or if you have any questions, um, drop them in the comments. Thanks so much for coming. All right. Bye-bye.